In this video, I'd like to share with you the six daily rituals that I use every single day that help me cope and overcome my tinnitus. These are small adjustments that I've made to my day-to-day -day life that I really believe have been fundamental to me overcoming my chronic tinnitus. So before I start, I want to let you know that I've got a website called helpmytinnitus.com where you can download free tips and tools. You can check out my latest interviews. I've also got two books available on Amazon. One is called Overcoming Tinnitus. The other one is called The Musician with Tinnitus. You can get these both in Kindle and printed version. Links to all these things in the description box below. So my name is Jack Rubinacci. I'm a professional musician and songwriter. I've had tinnitus for 18 years. And for the last six years, my tinnitus has been absolutely chronic. Six years ago, when my tinnitus got really bad, there wasn't much available information on the internet. There just wasn't many musicians talking about it. There wasn't information that was pertaining to me, my situation, being a professional musician, that sort of thing. Because of that, I developed my own set of tools. And from those tools, I developed a set of rituals that I use every day. And I really believe in them. I believe that tinnitus can be overcome, but you need to be proactive. So let's get into it. So ritual number one, five minutes of stretching in the morning. I start my day every single day by doing some very simple, non-taxing, easy exercises to help loosen my shoulders, my lower back, my hips, and my legs. I don't turn into Mr. Motivator. I don't start sort of kicking the ceiling with my toes, that sort of thing. I just do some very simple, calm exercises. I have the TV on, maybe with the volume very low, just so that I can focus my mind on what I'm doing. And that is to sort of start my day in a calm way. Also by loosening my body, I feel stronger. And increasing my strength and my core strength makes me feel on, like I can take on the day-to-day -day battles of every single day. Ritual number two, breakfast. No matter where I am in the world, no matter what I'm doing, I try and have the same breakfast every single day. And that breakfast consists of porridge, muesli, frozen fruit, and a touch of yogurt. It sounds complicated to do. It takes me about three minutes to put it all together. While the porridge is cooking, I can throw the frozen fruit in, put a little bit of the muesli in, put a little bit of the yogurt. I feel that by starting my day with these sort of things in my body, this good food in my body, I feel stronger and I feel like I can take on anything, including my tinnitus. Now, when I talk to people about porridge, they're like, oh my God, that sounds like something my grandparents would, would eat. Porridge is a superfood. It has so many benefits, including good bacteria for your gut. More and more research is suggesting that good bacteria in your gut is actually fundamental to your immune system and also your state of mind. So, I can feel it, I can feel the difference if I haven't eaten a good breakfast compared to when I have. I really feel it both in my mind and in my body, and I just feel stronger. So moving on to lunchtime and ritual number three, visualizing the future. Now, you might be starting to think, well, what's any of this got to do with tinnitus? Now he's talking about visualizing the future, he's talking about porridge. The central problem that you and I have is tinnitus. It's at the core of what we're talking about right now. We can't change that. You know that already. We know that in 2021, there's nothing that can change the tone or the pitch or the volume of our tinnitus. What we can change is everything around it. That's within our reach. So I change the things around it. Exercise, food, and visualizing the future in an uplifting sort of optimistic way, I think is absolutely fundamental, not just to overcoming tinnitus, but to sort of the human experience. Whatever you're into, visualize your future in a more optimistic way. Spend five to 15 minutes every day just thinking, where do you wanna be in a year? What holidays do you wanna go on? How do you wanna renovate your house? Maybe a new car you wanna buy? Start labeling and itemizing things that you like and things that you'd like to happen optimistically in your future. I truly believe that an optimistic outlook on the future is fundamental, like I say, not just the tinnitus, but to our day-to-day -day human experience. So moving on to the evening and ritual number four, 15 to 30 minutes outdoor activity. Now it doesn't really matter what outdoor activity you do. It could be swimming, it could be golfing, it could be playing football, it could be doing anything really. With me, it's walking. I love walking. I'm lucky because I live in Norway, I live overlooking a fjord and there's some very, very nice woods that I can walk in, but it doesn't really matter where you're walking. What it's about is being out, outside, using your body, and engaging in the real world. Now, 
I've got a friend that's a napropat, which is a form of physiotherapy. And he's told me many, many times the benefits of walking. And you think, well, yeah, it's great, but why is it so good for you? It's not just good for your heart. It's not just good for your lungs, for your sort of your cardiovascular. It's also good for the mind and good for the spirit. They're doing more and more research that shows just a simple walk in a pleasant setting can have many, many uplifting effects on your state of mind and on your spirit. Moving on to the last two rituals and two of the most important, I think. Ritual number five, socializing. Now, I obviously can't put a time on this because you can spend five minutes socializing with your friends on WhatsApp or you could spend five hours talking with your friends at a meal. It's all the same thing. It's all good stuff. Socializing is not just an important part to overcoming tinnitus. It's, again, it's an important part, I think, to the human experience. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because when you get tinnitus and it becomes quite bad, one of the things that you might want to do is to not socialize because you're worried about the sound, the noise, how you're going to cope in, in loud environments. I really encourage people to do more socializing because socializing distracts your brain and makes you feel good. So it can be five minutes on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, engaging with people that make you feel good. Or it can be five hours at someone's house, you know, having a meal and in good company. You come away reinvigorated, new ideas, you feel good and you've been distracted. So moving on to the last and final ritual, ritual number six, mind enrichment. Now, I think as people with tinnitus, we owe it to ourselves to keep an eye on the amount of negativity and stress that's coming into our minds. Now, I know it's not easy. I know it's not an easy sort of subject to talk about stress. We all have stress. I have the stresses of being an independent musician, day-to-day -day tug of war, that sort of thing. But I think we owe it to ourselves that when we come towards the end of the day, to, to keep an eye on what's actually being fed into our mind. So this is what I mean. When I wake up in the morning, I'm ready to take on the world. I watch the news. I know exactly what's going on. I have all day long of work, stress, deadlines, all that sort of stuff. But come a certain time of night, late towards the late evening, I want to flip the switch. I want less negativity and more uplifting things coming into my brain. So I think we owe it to ourselves as people with tinnitus to turn the stress and the negativity volume down, right down to zero, if we can, towards the end of the evening. So what does that mean? At 9.30, I have a do not disturb thing come on my phone so that notifications don't come up. I'm not interested in any emails, that sort of thing come past 9.30. That's just the way I work. I don't want sort of stressful emails coming to me uh, as I'm trying to sort of calm my mind down towards the end of the day. Also, I don't need to see any more news. I've seen the news all day long. I know what's going on. Come about seven o'clock, I, I don't need to see any more news. What I want is uplifting messages coming into my brain. I like, in my, in my particular case, I like light-hearted, intelligent comedy. So I've seen Frasier, I don't know how many times. Frasier is my comfort sort of zone. I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Seinfeld, The Office, all these sort of feel-good sort of things I love to watch. I love to watch uplifting documentaries that make me wonder at the wonder of the world, that make me wonder at how amazing it is to be alive, that make me think there's so many beautiful people, so many beautiful places in the world that I want to travel, that I want to meet, all this good stuff. I watch documentaries of people that have overcome great challenges in their life, Muhammad Ali, sports people. I love to research interesting people. I love to feel that it's amazing to be alive because it is amazing to be alive. So that when I sort of calm my brain down towards, as I'm getting towards bedtime, I'm full of awe and not full of negativity. So those are the six rituals that I do every single day. It feels a little bit weird sharing them because they're quite personal. These are sort of things that I've invented for myself and I actually do them every day. So to share them in a video feels a little bit weird. I hope that they've been interesting to you. I hope that they some way sort of make you think of your life and how maybe you can make small adjustments in your life to make your tinnitus smaller. Distractions, rituals, tools, I think, all help us get to that point. And I want everybody to get to that point. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.